Well, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. First of all, let me say thank you to all of the volunteers that came out to support the three families that had homegoing celebrations this past Friday and Saturday. I'm sure that they appreciate each one of you as you came out to help in various capacities uh, on uh, all three events. So thank you so very, very much. Where would our church be if it were not for people like you? Well, we're in the midst of a great snowstorm. I think we have about eight to 10 inches around the city of Chicago and the suburban areas. So it's kind of difficult to get back and forth. I know that our church parking lot is being plowed as we speak right now. So let me be brief in the message that I want to share with you this morning. I want to talk about spiritual blessings and the call of God that's on your life. First of all, if you have your Bibles with you, and I pray that you do, that you turn to the book of Ephesians chapter 1, and I'm going to read a few scriptures to you to just lay the foundation and the setting. I believe each one of you are, are tremendously blessed in different areas, and that God has a blessing for all of his children. First of all, Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 3, 4, 5, and 6 reads, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. Well, first of all, as I said, God has blessed all of his children. Whether you see the blessings of God now or whether you see them in the future, you ha must have the assurance that there is a blessing waiting for you. A blessing that's already been pre-established and it's in glory. You've been blessed by God with supernatural spiritual blessings that you have not seen as of yet. These blessings are held in the heavenlies, or what the Bible says are heavenly places. There is the earth realm and there's a heavenly realm or spiritual realm. So God has set aside earthly blessings and spiritual blessings for us in the heavenlies. So he has determined when you are to receive those types of blessings. Just because something is in layaway, just because it's laid up in heavenly places, does not mean that they don't belong to you. Each blessing has your name on it. But God determines when he releases that blessings from glory to let you experience it here in the earth realm. Just as God has chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world, God has also planned to release these special blessings in His time frame and not ours. Your attitude in life should be a blessing. It should be that I am blessed, highly favored, and the favor of God is on my life. That's the attitude that we should have. That's the attitude that I try to, to, uh, to project and persuade and influence other people to have. Because even though you may not walk in your blessings today, it doesn't mean that you're not entitled or possess blessings. There will come a time when God will transfer your blessings from a state of concealment to one of revelation and reality. That your blessings will then be visible. You as well as others see the blessings of the Lord overtake you. Wait for that moment. You're going to see your blessings chase you down. And as scripture says, it will overtake you. You will witness the manifestation of the blessings of the Lord. Don't get frustrated. Don't get upset because you don't have what you want right now. Don't get upset or envious of, envy, uh, of other people because you may see them with material things. You're going to receive the material things as well as the spiritual things that God has allowed allotted to you. There's a scripture in the Bible and it helps me from time to time when I think about how unnoticed I may be today. How people may view me today. There's a scripture that always uh, encourages me, and that scripture is found in Isaiah chapter 53. 
In Isaiah chapter 53, it makes it plain that what we will become tomorrow is not what we may look like today. 53 and 2 says, but oh, how few believe it. Who will listen? To whom will God reveal his saving power? In God's eyes, he was like a tender green shoot sprouting from a root in a dry and sterile ground. But in our eyes, there was no attractiveness at all. Nothing to make us want him. That's in Isaiah 53. Let me read it a different way. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. Christ shall grow up before God as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. That Jesus Christ would resurface, he would be resurrected, re resurrected as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form, no coming list, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. When folks first saw Jesus Christ, they didn't know who he was. As a matter of fact, he was not even accepted in his own country. So some of you may be going through a sense of being unprivileged now. Some of you may be dealing with depression or you may deal in, be dealing with low self-esteem now. People may overlook you. Even people in your own family may overlook you now. But here's what verse number three says also. It says, we despised him and rejected him. A man of sorrows, acquainted with bitter grief. We turned our backs on Jesus and looked the other way when he went by. Amen. That's how Jesus was rejected. Just as some of us may have been rejected. People may, may not realize your full potential today. They don't know who you are going to become. So they may not realize your full potential, but what's important is that you realize your uh, full potential. That you know who you are. And then you have to believe that you have the potential to become what God has designed or ordained you to be from the foundation of the world. You know, there's a story about opportunity as it meets potential that's found in 1 Kings chapter 19. I'm going to read you just a few verses of 19 and 20 and see if you can grab hold of what the context is of the scripture. So Elijah went and found Elijah who was plowing the field with 11 other teams ahead of him. He was at the end of the line with the last team. Elijah went over to him and threw his coat across his shoulders and walked away again. Elijah left the oxen standing there and ran after Elijah and said to him, First, let me go and say goodbye to my father and mother, then I will go with you. A powerful story. Elijah was the prophet of God. Elijah, with the J, was the prophet of God. Elisha, with an S, was the understudy for Elijah. Elijah was the prophet of God. Elijah was the student who attended the school of the prophets. Elijah knew where Elijah would be located. Elijah, God, knew where the chosen would be located. He knew. He said, I know that Elijah will be in the field of the kingdom of God, working in the vineyard, working. So he knew. So scripture says that Elijah was out in the field working with 11 other teams of men that were uh, uh, behind oxen plowing the field. Imagine that, 12 teams, and it lines Elijah up as being last. So you got 12 teams of oxen and 12 teams of men plowing in the field, but Elijah is last. Elijah was the 12th man plowing in the field. He was last in line. I want you to recall Matthew 20, 16. It says, so the last shall be first and the first shall be last. For many be called, but few are chosen. Eleven plowers were called, but only one was chosen. When God's man, God's prophet, when he needed somebody to replace him, he needed that understudy. Who was going to hold the mantle after Elijah? God chose Elijah. Elijah was not concerned about position. He wasn't trying to get to the front. He didn't have any problem with being last. I got a feeling that in the back of his mind, he always knew that God was going to do something special in his life. That's our message to you this morning. God's going to do something special in your life. Don't rush to get to the front of the line. 
Normally when people get to the front of the line, when it's all said and done, they end up in the back. They end up last. And those that are humble, humble themselves. Whatever life throws at you, you're able to receive it. You're not confused. You're not distraught about being in last place. You get a chance to see how everyone else conducts themselves who are ahead of you. So you learn from the experience of being in the rear. But just like the woman with the issue of, of, of blood, she may have been last. She may have been in the back of the line. But God is going to find a way to move you from the back to the front. That's what happens to chosen people. He took Elijah, he took the mantle, the jacket, the coat. He took it off of himself and placed it on the shoulders of Elijah. There is a big difference between being called and being chosen. The Bible, and I've already read that to you in Ephesians, it says that we were chosen from the foundation of the world, which means that God had already chosen Elijah to take Elijah's place before the foundation of the world. Amen. He chose him. So don't forget that every time there's an elevation, every time you move to the back to the front, that there is a separation. There's a period and a time of separation. Elijah, he stood right there. He saw Elijah, his master, his future leader. He had to make a decision. Do I follow the 11 plowers like I've been doing most of my life? Do I get in the field and come up last like I've been doing most of my life? Do I hold on to the plow with the oxen that, uh, which I was doing for most of my life? Or do I let the handles of the plow go? I'm compelling you in the name of Jesus. There will be separation, so get accustomed to it. There will be separation, so expect it when it happens. There are some things that you're going to have to let go of. Let them go that way. Because opportunity is going to meet you. And so you got to know when opportunity meets potential. You have the potential. God has placed that potential in you to fulfill your assignment, to be the great woman of God, the great man of God that he designed you to be. And so when opportunity meets this potential, something explosive is going to happen. First of all, your positioning in the world changes. So you don't minister to just a few people. You start to minister to the masses. You don't question yourself about your daily assignments because you know that you have something greater. That's God calling you to. God is allowing you to meet potential. And so you have to be comfortable with letting those 11 plowers continue to plow. While you go forth to work in the kingdom that is greater. And you have greater impact on the kingdom of God in the world. And so we're asking you today, meet your potential. Don't pass up the opportunities. Just think about it for a moment. When Elijah went to the field, there were 11, plow, 12 plowers. One stopped to listen. And the 11 plowers kept going. Don't you dare miss opportunity when opportunity comes. Christ, Jesus Christ, is our opportunity. Don't miss them because you're holding on to man, the world, the things of this time. Let those things go. Hold on to Jesus Christ and know that your life is going to be fulfilled with an abundance of things that are held for you up in heavenly places. God bless you today. I want you to know that our God loves you. If you don't have a church home, consider joining Jordan Temple. That's right, Jordan Temple. We're located at 4421 West Roosevelt Road. You can reach us at 7082 three six zero eight hundred if you'd like to sow into our ministry you can do it online at jordantemple.org you can do it from our church app just download it from itunes or the play store jordan temple baptist church get it on your phone or you can uh, go to jt cash and use the cash app the pound sign jt cash and the cash app we pray that you have a magnificent day don't let this snow stop you from the joy of the lord you be blessed today. We'll catch you next time.